Good morning, dear friends. Greetings to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have a new day ahead of us. We thank you for taking this time to be silent and listen to the voice of God through this meditation. May the Holy Spirit speak to us, encourage us, and strengthen us for life and service for today. Today's meditation is uh, uh, taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 22, verses 24 to 30. Now, in these verses, Jesus is teaching uh, the disciples what true greatness truly means and uh, how we may have that greatness. So, but in the heart of every man, there is a desire for greatness. Some people achieve it and most people do not. The number one thing I want to, the first thing I want to meditate with you concerning this is, there are two concepts of greatness. Verse 25 describe greatness according to this world. That means the world's concept of concept of uh, greatness and the world's attitude or view of greatness. According to this view, greatness is holding authority um, over people and lord it over them. Holding position of authority, influence, money, and property. Men seek position and wealth for the sake of power. They want to rule and manage people. They use these privileges and these positions and the facilities that they enjoy to control people and manage people and uh, uh, bring people under their authority. That is worldly greatness. So that the people may fear them and respect them and consider them great. The second concept is found in verses 26 and 27 where Jesus is describing what true greatness is, but you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. Here we find the true greatness. Now according to this view, which is taught by our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, in contrast to verse 25, the Lord rejected the world's view of greatness. True greatness does not seek a position, for the sake of authority and power. Neither do they give and help uh, for the sake of being known and become popular. In other words, true greatness is not self-centered, not selfish, nor worldly-minded. According to the teachings of Jesus, True greatness is a matter of inward spirit and heart. It is seen in the person who expresses his or her love for Jesus Christ and a humility that is found in the Lord Jesus Christ according to Philippians chapter 2 verse 3. Now in a desire to serve both God and human beings and in a willingness to be seen as least important in the kingdom of God. That is true humility. 
And is any, anyone desire for such humility? We don't want to consider others better than ourselves, do we? And here, that is the meaning, that we consider ourselves least in the kingdom of God and uh, you don't mind others knowing you as a less important man. So the first thing I want to talk to you is um, the greatness is not positions, office, leadership, power, influence, and academic degrees, fame, abilities, and uh, talents, great accomplishment or success. These do not make true greatness. But it is not what we do for God, but what we are in spirit before him. And uh, that's what we read in verses 26 and 27. And secondly, true greatness is that we become great in the right areas of life. And these areas can be, you be great in faith, great in humility, great in godly character, great in wisdom, great in self-control, and great in patience, and great, of course, in love. And in other words, you read Galatians chapter uh, 5, verses 22 and 23. There you read the fruit of the Spirit. While fruit is singular, there are nine things uh, mentioned there. You put all these nine things together, what you get? You get the character of Jesus. And so the great, uh, the true greatness is to possess the character of Jesus, which is consisted of all these things that I, oh, I have mentioned. And that takes real humility to bow ourselves and be on our knees in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and asking grace, His grace, to enable us to be humble in accepting the character of Jesus and keep on producing this character of Jesus, which is the fruit of the Spirit. And it is very important, my friends, that you and I carry the character of Jesus in this world as we go about doing the will of God in our lives. And it is to have the greatness of Christ who loved righteousness and hate wickedness. Now what is spirituality? Spirituality is to uh, love righteousness or to love what Jesus loves and hate what Jesus hates. And that approve what Jesus approves and disapprove what Jesus disapprove. And that is important. Whatever Jesus Christ stands for, we go for it. And whatever Jesus rejected, we reject. And the third thing is, um, uh, the greatness, true greatness, is a matter of heartfelt love for God. Now, this love is expressed in one's commitment to God. Consecration and concentration will improve your results in God's work. God has placed each one of us in a particular place with the gifts and talents needed for that place and for the people of that place. Greatness is to use the gift given to you to change the people in that place for the better. 
to be like Jesus as they see Jesus in you and glorify your God in heaven. And in this, people will find greatness in you. And many people think that in order for you to great to be for others, you have to be rude. You have to talk very, very authoritatively in a way that will sometimes hurt people. And uh, you think you'll have to um, meet them always with a stick and use the stick if you want to. And that's what they think the greatness is. Then people will fear and they may fear, but they don't respect you. Out of fear, they may do what you ask them to do, but they never consider you great. And this is something that we need to be humble enough to understand. At the same time, true greatness, according to Jesus Christ, is when you are willing to serve others and to be a servant. And in that, people will find the true greatness and they will gain the respect and honor from people. And so, I pray that the Holy Spirit will guide you today to live such a life in which they will begin to see Jesus in you. As Jesus said, you know, you were making a comparison. Now, by asking them this question, now who is great? The one sit at the table or the one who serves? Naturally, the answer, the worldly answer will be the one who sit at the table. He is great. And Jesus said, but I was among you as the one who serves. And my friends, this is very important a lesson that we need to learn. So go after gaining true greatness by being a servant to others. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will help you this today as you bow before your Lord and God and surrender yourself to Him so that He will put His Holy Spirit in you who will teach you to be humble and thus be great. Now we don't go about uh, pretending that we are humble in order to others to consider you great. No, that will not work. You don't worry about what people think of you as long as you behave and act like someone who is willing to serve and not loading it over others. And let this attitude be in you and in me. And because of this willingness in Jesus, in the Philippians chapter 2, ends that passage, paragraph, talking about the humility uh, and, the, and the mind of Christ. Therefore, God also has exalted him and given him a name that is above all of the names that before this name every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let this be your joy and experience. I pray that God's strength be given to you in Jesus' name. Amen. This is a day of opportunity. So make good use of this day and have a wonderful day. Amen.